In this video we share Father Gabriel A. Amorth on World War III. Defending against evil how and why, in this long interview with Father Gabriel A. Amorth who explains some fundamental points of his service as an exorcist, he touches on various neuralgic points of a burning topic that very often arouses unjustified fears and doubts. Father Amorth responds, being an exorcist today is a difficult task and, from the point of view of popularity, an extremely thankless job. On the other hand, if we read the Gospel, Jesus is very clear, he gives the apostles and all their successors three precise tasks, namely preaching, casting out evil spirits and healing the sick. If you do not fulfill all these three tasks, you do not completely correspond to God's will. It should be noted that many times holy priests cast out demons, freed souls, without being aware of it. Carrying out this task, I see the completion of my priesthood. Therefore, being an exorcist today means being a man of great effort, striving to be a man of great prayer and great faith, because without faith nothing is achieved, it is faith that heals and frees, and it means being exposed to criticism or teasing laughter from other priests. In some cases, Pope John Paul II was also talked about as an exorcist. Father Amorth responds, Yes, there are at least two episodes that I know of in which Pope John Paul II performed exorcisms. One of the most famous, described by the Cardinal and told in the book, is the episode when the Pope exorcised a girl brought to him, by the then Bishop of Spoleto, Bishop Alberta. He performed a real exorcism on a girl who was rolling on the floor in his apartment. News for the few present who said that it is only read in the Gospel. They were in disbelief not knowing that for us exorcists it is almost daily bread. And towards the end of the exorcism, the Pope uttered the sentence, Tomorrow I will celebrate a holy mass for you. At this sentence the girl stood up, smiling, temporarily freed. I say temporary because it should be remembered that deliverance from the devil is an exceptional act and intervention of God, a true and true miracle. This usually happens after a long time. There are people I have been exorcising for more than 15 years, that means I have performed hundreds of exorcisms on them. At the end of each exorcism, they leave the impression of being free, healed. Instead, this state of liberation does not last long. The devil attacks them again. Final, liberation takes time. I know of another exorcism of John Paul II, which he performed previously. Father Candido, another famous exorcist from Rome, told me about it. And again, two years ago, in St. Peter's Square, we saw a girl who was walking with a crooked, hunchbacked face. They put her in the first row among the sick. As soon as the Pope came down, this girl started screaming like a madwoman. Then they took her away. The Pope said, leave her aside, I want to bless her later. After the audience, in the room near the bell tower, in the presence of parents and Bishop Tansii, a well-known bishop in the Vatican, the Pope prayed over her for more than half an hour. We can't talk about complete liberation here either, but if he took a good step towards liberation, yes. I don't know about the other episodes, but I can say for sure that Karl Vitilla believes in it, and that he often talked about the devil. In cases of exorcism, very special episodes are also talked about, people who spit out various objects. There is a lot of skepticism about it, there is talk of a return to the Middle Ages. Father Amorth, it is true. This accusation is, unfortunately, and I always tell these people that they are very ignorant. I am a fan of the Middle Ages, a wonderful time. When I was told that observation in France, I replied, start demolishing the most beautiful churches and basilicas you have, because they are all from that period. I am not taking you back to the Middle Ages or even to the time of Christ, but to Adam and Eve. Then the intervention of the devil on man and the fight against evil began. The devil was always there, always at work. His trick, his main victory, 
is known, to make people believe that it does not exist. The devil wants us to work secretly in order to intervene unhindered and lead man to evil. The devil also has another extraordinary, rare task, inflicting certain evils that can also lead to demonic possession and about which the devil could care less. The devil is more focused on his usual activity, which is to try to tempt man, lead him to do evil, and cause him to fall into sin. That is why it is very important that the devil does not believe in his existence, so that he can operate without hindrance. In a secularized society, where exorcisms are often considered acts of witchcraft, what kind of message might we be sending? Father Amorth responds, if there is a society where the devil wins, it is ours. Just look around you and see how sins are viewed as experiences. Example, there has never been a war that killed so many children every day as abortion does. Abortion is real murder officially sanctioned by states. This is the triumph of Satan, a wonderful triumph. Another example is divorce. This is the triumph of Satan because God is the God of love, peace, unity, harmony. Wars have become increasingly difficult to fight because they are between populations. We live in a society where Satanism is generalized and, mind you, I am only speaking here of the workings of Satan in its explosion and its effects. Let's think about Satanism itself, about how Satanic sects have spread throughout the world, how many people devote themselves to Satan. I have burned many dedications to Satan written in blood to seek money, success and pleasure, the three great human passions that make you sell your soul to the devil. God forbid that a punishment should happen to those who are strong, that the people should be condemned. I believe we are heading for the Third World War, I can see it by so many external signs that whoever has eyes to see cannot fail to see. There are many prophecies about this, such as that of Teresa Musco, a seer from Caserta, who died in the concept of holiness and for whom the cause of beatification was initiated. She predicted the Six-Day War in Israel, she predicted the Second World War and then she also predicted that Palestinians and Israelis will always try to come to an agreement, but they will never succeed, because from there the Third World War will be born. Now that the Third World War will result from that, we have not yet seen that, but that all these years the two nations have been unsuccessfully trying to come to an agreement, we can all clearly see that. I see the work of Satan extremely popular, victorious, and thank God we know that it will not be victorious, because the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. The recently deceased charismatic said, we find many people who find time to read the newspaper every day, but do not find time, throughout their life, to read the Bible. And this is a very, very widespread fact. What is the way to defend against evil? Father Amorth responds, return to the Ten Commandments, the laws of God. You see that God's laws are not prohibitions, but laws of salvation. Return to love one another, return to harmony, return to honesty. Today, society is based precisely on injustice, we must return to God. Did Padre Pio ever predict to you his ministry as an exorcist? Father Amorth responds, no. When I often visited Padre Pio, I was not yet an exorcist priest and I had not even thought about becoming one. I had spiritual children and I talked to him about them, begging him to entrust them to him, and Padre Pio accepted. I told him, so my spiritual children will call you Grandpa Pio. He was laughing. So one of my spiritual sons is also the spiritual son of Padre Pio. Thank you for supporting my channel. May God bless you and keep you. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, pray for us.